Hello. Um, I just wanted to give a few instructions today um, about working on your project. So um, I thought I would just record some instructions and show you where to find everything on Brightspace because um, so far you've just worked on this on your own um, during remote learning. So uh, when you go onto Brightspace, um, well, I know it looks different on your phone, but if you pull up Brightspace on the laptop, you'll, in the content section, that's what I'm in right now, um, and it may look the tiniest little bit different in the student view compared to my teacher view, but you should have all these units listed. So I changed the remote learning unit to just be called ecology now. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into ecology and um, if you go down to assignments and tasks, that's where you're going to find the project. So here it is here, the biodiversity of a wetland ecosystem project. So there's no need to have a printed copy of this because the instructions are all here. So you can just access the instructions. So if you click on that, um, it comes up here. Um, if you want to take a bigger look at it. Oops, that's not much bigger now, is it? Oh, here. Oops, I'm just trying to zoom in a little bit. Oops, that didn't do anything. Hang on here. Um, hmm, I'm struggling. All right, hopefully you can see this okay. Um, you can be following along with me anyway, so that you'd have a better look at this on your screen. But here are the instructions. So at this point, what you should have completed is you should have completed slides one through nine. So slide one is just your title of the project. So you can just use the same title as what the project is called, Biodiversity of a Wetland Ecosystem. And if you're working on this by yourself, you're just going to put your name. If I did say you could work with one other person, so if there's two of you, make sure you include both names. Um, just to make it look nice, you may also want to include an appropriate picture there that would suit the project, right? So something to do with a wetland or an eco like a wetland ecosystem would probably be a good choice. Now, this would be what I call part one of the project. This is what you should have already completed. So on each of these eight slides, there's going to be one slide for each one of these factors. So you're going to choose six biotic, so six living, and two abiotic, two non-living factors that can be found at Okamic Marsh. So I'm going to show you the appendix to this project in a second. So you can look at the appendix and you'll see ecosystem diagrams and also identification cards in the appendix. So you can use those to help you select your six biotic factors. The two abiotic factors aren't exact, exactly identified, but you can think about what those would be. So what are some very important non-living parts of a wetland, right? So by non-living, I mean not dead, but never has lived, never will live. So what are some very important non-living things that we find at an ecosystem? So you're just choosing two of those. So on each slide, you should have a color picture, um, the scientific name, so that you'll have to look up. So that would be the genus and species name. So you can search that up um, online. The common name, which would be the name that's in the, on the identification card or labeled in the ecosystem diagram. And then this you'll have to research. The role or niche that the biotic or abiotic factor fills. So if it's living, if it's biotic, tell me, is it a producer? Is it a primary consumer, a secondary consumer, oops, or a tertiary consumer? Um, what does it eat? What eats it? Where does it live? What's its habitat like? What other benefits does it provide to the wetland, if any? Okay, so tell me some information about the role that that living thing plays in its ecosystem and it, within its food web and food chain. If it's abiotic, what's its importance? Why is that an important factor in the ecosystem? How does it benefit the living factors in that wetland ecosystem? So those, again, are, are all things that you're going to need to include. 
Um, the scientific name for the abiotic factor isn't important because um, the, it doesn't really have a scientific name. Only the living things would have that. So just the picture, the common name, and then it's important. So that should be done, but in case you're wondering if you are on the right track, that's kind of what I'm looking for. Today, what you should focus in on is slide 10. So this is creating a food web that includes at least 12 of the biotic factors found at Okamic Marsh. So you can, again, use those identification cards in the appendix. And you're going to figure out 12 of these living things and you're going to put them into a food web. So if you find it easier, you could do this by hand and take a picture and then insert the picture into your PowerPoint. Or you can make like a diagram somehow um, in like in Word or in some other program and put it into your PowerPoint. Um, be creative here, but basically just on one slide, I want to see a food web and it should have 12 of 12 living things at Okamic Marsh. So those identification cards are really helpful because they write on those cards, it says what the substance eats and what eats it. So you can kind of feel like fit it in to, um, to its place in the food web. So you want to label your food web with trophic levels. Now this can be the tricky part. So um, you may end up with some questions about this and, and you can just kind of um, hold on to those questions or you can message me on Brightspace and ask, but I can check, the, check it out um, when I'm back at school on Friday um, if you are a little bit uncertain about the trophic level, but generally producers, plants are at trophic level one, herbivores, things that eat plants are at trophic level two, Trophic level three would be what eats the herbivores and so forth. So it's just kind of like leveling up through the food chain. Um, but there are some organisms that can fall into more than one trophic level. So if that's the case, you can label them with both trophic levels that you think that they belong in. Okay, so that's actually, it seems, sounds easy, but it takes a little bit of work to organize this food web. So that's what should be your focus today. If you happen to get that done, you can move on to the next part, slides 11 through 14. So this is describing a wetland. So on slide 11, you're wanting to define what is a wetland. So you probably wanna include a picture and you wanna include like an explanation of what a wetland is um, in your own words. Don't just copy and paste a definition from the internet. It's very obvious when you've just copied and pasted. So you want to Put it in your own words and remember to be keeping a list of refer like of sites you've used so you um so that you have a list at the end of where you accessed your information and then on the next three slides you're going to talk about three benefits that wetlands provide to the environment okay so these can be benefits to the biotic or the abiotic factor so you're going to do one benefit per slide so there's lots of benefits that wetlands provide. Choose three of them and then explain them fully, one on each slide. So I don't think you'd get much beyond these, um, these parts today, but I'm just, I think I'll go ahead and just continue to explain in case you are, have worked ahead and you're wanting to go ahead and work on some of the other aspects of the project. So um, after that, this would be the next part. This is define and, and discuss the importance of biodiversity to the health of an ecosystem. So on slide 15, you're going to tell me what biodiversity is. So we talked about this. You can find the definition in your notes, but you can add to that definition with some of your own research. Remember, again, in your own words, um, don't just copy and paste a definition. Uh, slide 16, how and why biodiversity is important to the health and sustainability of an ecosystem. So why is it very important to have a lot of biodiversity? Why does that make an ecosystem healthy? And how does that make that ecosystem sustainable? So that is going to involve some research. Then three factors that are negatively impacting the biodiversity of Manitoba's wetland ecosystems. 
So what some things that, that are decreasing biodiversity in, in wetlands in particular? So you can, there'll be lots of these. Um, one of the three that you choose, I want you to focus in on climate change as one of the factors because that's just so, so important and relevant right now. So choose climate change is going to be one of your negative impacts. And then you can choose any two others that you would like um, and do one per slide. So 17, 18, and 19, each slide is one negative impact. Um, and remember, wherever possible and wherever it makes sense to do so, you can include pictures or diagrams or things that are going to add to your the overall look of your project. And then finally, on slide 20, three steps that can be taken to protect protect the biodiversity of our wetland ecosystem. So um, these all three can be on the same slide. So what are some things that we can do? What are some things that are being done? Or maybe there's some groups or organizations out there that are doing certain things to protect our wetlands. So explain what those things are. And finally, this is the last part of the project. So there are um, there is a list of species at risk um in the appendix so these are particularly species at risk that are found at okamic marsh okay so from that list you're going to choose one species so some are endangered some are threatened some are extirpated um, and i think there's something called like special concern or or something like that i'll show you that that page in a moment um, so pick one that's interesting to you and you're going to do a little research on that one particular um, organism. So give its common and scientific name and a picture of what it looks like. So that's on slide 21. What title does it hold? So you can find this title right off the list in the appendix, but then tell us what does that title mean and when was the species added to the list? Like when was it given that title? So that will involve some research. Um, identify its niche. So similar to what you did in part one, what does it eat? What does it use for shelter? Like explain its habitat. What role does it play in its ecosystem, food chain, food web? Uh, then tell us what factors have caused that species to decline. So why is it in uh, either endangered or threatened or special concern or extirpated? What has happened to cause that? And finally, the last slide, what's being done to protect the species? So there's usually things in place when species get put on this list. What are some of those things that are being done? So you can explain that on the last slide. Um, what I didn't include was you should include a final slide that includes all the sources that you access. Um, so make sure you're kind of keeping a running list of those. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when I get back. Okay, so I'm just going to show you that appendix now. So in that same um, folder, underneath where the actual project is, if you click the next one, this is the appendix. Okay, so in the appendix, you'll see, I'm not going to open it up bigger. I'll just kind of do a quick run through. There's a few things. So again, this doesn't need to be printed out. You can just uh, refer to this from Brightspace. So this is just a nice colored diagram of like a snapshot of Okamic Marsh or hypothetically, right? So here's a bunch of the living things and you can also see some of the non-living things in the picture. And then that's the same picture, but each um, species of plant and animal is identified. So you can see, okay, number one, well, if I find number one, which is right here, that's the painted turtle. Okay, number two, that weed there, that's called duckweed. Number three, that's a pond snail. So you can actually, this is what you would look at to choose your six biotic factors. So any six from this list. And then you can also kind of by looking at the picture, you could choose two abiotic factors. Now, when you go to do a little bit of information about each one, there's a, just a little bit of information. This will more come into play when you do the food web, okay, like part two. So for every single species listed there, 
it tells you what it eats and what it is eaten by. Okay, so it tells you where it sort of fits into the food web. So there is a card like this for every single um, thing listed in that diagram. Okay, so those will be really helpful for the food web. Um, and then the very last thing in the appendix is for that very last part of the project. That's the species at risk. So um, you can see here is extirpated the greater prairie chicken. Endangered species, we have the burrowing owl, the piping plover. So those are both birds. Same with the red knot, that's also a bird. The monarch butterfly, uh, that's an invertebrate. Well, you know what a monarch butterfly is. Then these are threatened species. I won't read through them all. And then there's quite a list of special concern species. So these are all species that we would say are at risk. Their populations have declined and, you know, at just varying levels of risk, right? So endangered would be the worst and then it kind of goes down from there. So you can use that to help you choose one species for the last part of the project. Um, so make sure, again, that you're doing this in PowerPoint and just really be aware to follow the steps and follow, it's very clearly laid out. And if you want to see where your marks come from, the rubric is also included. So you can really clearly see um, how you will get your marks. And if you're following the instructions and doing a good job, you should do quite well on this project. This does, because we're not going to do a test in the ecology unit, this will be quite in, like, it'll make a difference in your mark. It's going to be weighted quite heavily. So it's a nice um, little bump up generally before the exam. So work hard, um, do your best work, and make sure you're just really referring to these instructions. Um, and I'll still give you another class. Um, so you'll have today's class and tomorrow's class to work on this. And then I'll make sure to give you one class next week when I am at school um, in case you want to ask me things as you're working on it. Okay, so that is all I have for you today.